it's hard to imagine that the UFC is turning 30 years old later this year. Thanks to the Ultimate Fighting Championship, terms like tapping out and mixed martial arts are now household terms. Behind it all was UFC President Dana White. Recently, Michael Ozanian sat down with the Emperor of the Octagon to discuss UFC's first 30 years. Dana, what does the 30th anniversary of UFC mean to you? Uh, you know, obviously, it's it's been amazing for me. It's been a great ride, and um, I, I don't I don't look at these milestones the way that I probably should because I'm always looking at what's next and what's still possible and what still needs to be done. But you know, to to have been here for 30 years and I've been around for like 23 of them is is uh, is pretty amazing. Yeah, I want to get to the future because there's a lot happening real soon. But I just want to go back because I know, you know, when the Fertitta brothers came in in 2001 and, and bought UFC for $2 million, I mean, the thing is teetering on bankruptcy. You know, it's a famous story that everybody knows. But as we look at it now, it's it's a $12 billion or so enterprise. And, you know, there's a great story here of building an enormous brand and, and going against the odds to do it. As you look back today, what would you say were the key things in the success of building this business? Well, we 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 stuck to our guns. We we built a uh, a business that we believed. You know, we we were big fight fans from from day one, boxing fans, and uh, there were a lot of things that I liked about boxing and a lot of things that I didn't like about boxing. So I, I used both in the way that that the UFC was built. We stack cards. Not just one fight we're selling at the at the end of the night. The card is stacked with tons of great fights. Uh, you know, you don't have to build up these guys with this mystique of you know they're forty nine and zero with forty seven knockouts, and if they lose one, that's the end of the, the the whole mystique, and they're done. You know, these guys fight the absolute best from top to bottom, all the way up to the to the championship. So when somebody wins the title, you absolutely know that that's the best guy in the world. Because even when you have you know, guys in boxing who, who are world champions, there's multiple world champions with different sanctioning organizations who don't fight each other. And, you know, you never really know who's the best. That's not the case here. When you think about boxing in the old days, they did fights in Vegas, Atlantic City, Madison Square Garden, and sometimes L.A. We literally took our fights everywhere, all over the world, to every major city in America, uh, you name it. We, we, we exposed the product to everybody over the last 23 years. There's a lot of excitement about this uh, putting UFC and WWE into one enterprise and, and having it be publicly traded, you know, spun off from Endeavor and publicly traded by the end of this year. I would imagine, uh, even though the two will still be run independently as promotions, but but when you have two really strong brands like that, are, are there a lot of possibilities in terms of synergies, in terms of sponsorships, you know, licensing, other things outside of the ring, if you will? Yeah, I think that when you look at the synergies between the two companies, I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to continue to run this business the way that I always have. They will continue to run their business the way they always have. And obviously, Ari and Endeavor are going to add a lot of value over there on the sponsorship, licensing side, and whatever else it may be. But then when you start talking about, you know, when we roll into cities, you could have, you know, a city that wants UFC, WWE, and you could do uh, bull riding that same weekend. I mean, there's just, you know, when you look at, you know, the parent company and all the things that we're creating and building inside the parent company, it's uh, this thing's going to turn into a sports juggernaut. How are you viewing UFC's possibilities right now in terms of potential media rights? Yeah, well, we've always been big risk takers. Obviously, back in the Fertitta days and now with, with the Ari and, and WME days, too. Because when you think about it at that time, when we did the deal with ESPN+, Plus, we were butting heads really badly with DirecTV and the cable systems out there. And they basically pushed us to the point. Ari and I had talked, and we said, you know what? Let's just go ESPN streaming. You know, we were going on to a streaming platform, which was – incredibly risky at the time, even though you were doing it with Disney and ESPN. Massive risk. These guys are launching this thing. We were basically, you know, helped them launch ESPN+. Plus, But we were so tired of, of the cable side and, and, and the satellite side, 
being basically pigs. I mean, you know, for so many years, we decided to, 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 to just go for it and, and dive into the streaming and doing it with ESPN+. Plus. My goal and my dream for this thing is I believe that there's no ceiling on fighting. I think that when you have the right fight in the right place in the right time, you know, the whole world wants to watch. And pretty soon, that's going to be a reality where we will all be watching the same fight at the same time. And how many viewers are you going to have? I mean, there's 8 billion people on Earth. So what is the number? Let's get into some brand extension here. Power Slap, which which stopped, uh, you know, uh, it's separate from UFC, I understand. It's, it's, it's yes. your baby. Um, tell me, what was the genesis of Power Slap? So... I am like 2016, 17, 18. I'm going through social media and I start to see these slapping events uh, on there, you know, coming out of Poland and Russia. And I'm like, this is crazy. So I start to take a deeper dive. I start to look into it. And on YouTube, this thing looks like it's shot on a flip phone and it's filmed in a barn and it has 350 million views. I'm like, that's like a Justin Bieber video. How does this thing have this many views? So I was fascinated by it. So I ended up reaching out to my, my go-to guys, the Fertitta brothers. And I said, listen, I'm into this thing. I think I want to do it. And they said, if you're in, we're in. Then the pandemic hits. So, you know, I'm facing all these challenges with the UFC at the time. And then as soon as we come out of the pandemic, uh, I, I told those guys, I'm ready to do this. Do you want to do it? So... We did, and and the thing is the absolute juggernaut on, on social media. We did the first season. We, you know, we filmed it. You, you know, we, we have this, this blueprint or formula or whatever you want to call it on how to launch this stuff. It works every time. You know, you, you create these reality shows uh, that, that lead into a finale, and that's how you start to build stars and start to build a sport. And I did it again. I mean, the, the social media numbers, I don't know if my team sent them over to you, TikTok so is in, it's insane on TikTok, isn't it? It's just like it, the demographics. Uh, as I was looking at the numbers, it seems the demographics are a little younger, perhaps, than UFC. But there's a right. pretty big crossover. But the numbers on TikTok are absolutely insane. Think about this. We're about this thing has existed for like six months, and if you look at the numbers that we're pulling, I mean, just on. Well, let me get into this. So so during the same time period as the NHL was in the middle of their uh, uh, conference finals, right? When you look at total videos with over a million views for the NHL was six. Power Slap had 31. Total videos with over 2 million views. The NHL had one. Power Slap had 20. We beat them in views 25 million to 90 million, right? Now think about game four through seven for the Celtics in the heat. Massive, right? Historic games. And, and, and total video views over a million for the Heat. They had 20. The Celtics had 29. Power Slap had 31. Total views, they had 65 million. We had 90 million. I mean, if we did half of what they did, it would be a story. But to beat these guys at this point in time, and right now on uh, Instagram, Power Slap has almost a million uh, followers, right? The Golden Knights don't have a million followers. And 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 they've been to the to the Stanley Cup finals twice. And they they got a six-year head start on us. And I could go on for days. I mean, when I when, when you talk about how this stuff works on social media, you, you almost think you think we're lying that, that the numbers are so big. It's astonishing. But when you looked at this, it sounds like uh you saw some parallels between the very early stages of UFC when you jumped in and, and this and sort of the same sort of criticism people saying why it wouldn't work but yet same reasons why you thought it really would work it was identical identical it literally the exact same criticism the negativity the press going after it and attacking it you know politicians you name it it was it was identical to the ufc so i've been in this position before you know i, I don't fold or crack in these type of situations fought through all the noise and now in six months, we have turned this into a profitable business, and this thing is, is is on its way. How has this journey, though, changed you in the most significant ways? Because it must have in some ways. Yeah, I, I mean, I've uh, listen. I'm still a lot of people that worked at the UFC. You know, we had sort of like a a small 
Microsoft type deal here. You know what I mean? In 2016, when we sold, a lot of people that worked here that had been here early on cashed out and they all took off and, you know, didn't work again and or took, you know, five, six years off and are starting to, you know, dive back in and do some stuff. I've been in the trenches the whole time. You know, I, I, I get here every day at 8.30 in the morning. I don't leave till 7.00. Um, you know, I'm taking on more and more responsibilities like with the power slap and other things that I'm involved in with the Fertitta brothers. And and uh, I love it. I love every minute of this. The, the way that this is, has changed me, I, I guess I would say, is that, um, you know, obviously I've learned a lot about business and people and you name it, but I, I've had a blast. Well, listen, man, I love you. I, I can't thank you enough for your time because I know how crazed and busy you are. And uh, I just hope that as Power Slap and other stuff continues to uh, keep su succeeding, you know, maybe in the not too distant future, we could check in again quickly and, and give us an update here for the uh, Sports Money Show. I appreciate the support very much. Thank you, buddy. Good to see you.